Okay, here we go. 5 to the x equals 10. Why would I need logs for this? Because you can't just do it in your head. 5 squared would be 25. That would be too much, right? 5 to the 1 would be what? 5, and that's not enough. And so I need something that's a little more. It's like 1 point something. That's pretty close. Now, you could guess and check, but you, want, you don't want to do that for all the logs. They have a special way of doing this with a log. So this is called an exponential because it's got a base and it's got an exponent. And you can rewrite this as a log. If any of you remember that, would you please, right now, you don't have to write the problem, but write it down as a log. Let me see if you know how to write that as a log. If you've totally forgot, that's OK. Ooh, some people remember. Where's your blank page? Should have a blank page in there by now. Nice work. Okay, it looks to me like about one out of ten kids remember this, which is why I'm reviewing. All right, so here we go. This is the base, right? So on a log, logs have a base too. Log, base, five, and then it's never as simple as just taking the next thing and putting it down next. You go to the opposite side. You start here, and you go over here to pick up your next number of ten equals, and then you go back here to pick up the last number x. Log base 5 of 10 equals x. Now you might say, well, why is that any better? I still don't know what the answer is. But now you can take a calculator and put that into the calculator. So everybody, grab your graph and calc. Muy rápido, por favor. Here is how you type it in. You cannot type in log 5, 10. It doesn't work. What you can do is know how to do what's called a base change. And this has a base of 5. Your calculator can't do base 5. But you can do this as two base 10s. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I write this as log, oh, can't write suddenly. Do you get that the base here is 8? Calculators can't do base 8. Calculators can only do two bases. They can do base 10, and they can do base E. You're not going to learn that until next year. So you've got to get down to base 10. If I just write log 7, do you know what base that is in? If you don't say what base it is, it'll default automatically to a certain base. What do you think? 10. So your calculator can handle it even if there's no base, because then it's going to assume it's base 10. So if I type in log 7, it's going to be doing log base 10. All right, so the point is, if you ever have a log that doesn't have any base, it's a base 10. Now go back to this one. If it's a base 5, how do I type this in? It's really simple, and I'll, there's a complicated reason for it, but I'll tell you just a simple way to do it. There's a log 10 and a log 5 involved. You just got to do log 10 divided by log 5. Log 10 divided by log 5. Hit equals, you'll get a decimal. I bet you it'll be between 1 and 2. Okay, log 10 divided by log 5, what did you get? 1.43. 1 if x is 1.43, then do you get, <coughs> staying with me, Mr. C? Okay, did you type in log 10? Divide by. No. Log 10 divided by log 5. That's different than log 10 divided by 5. Log 10 divided by log 5. There you go. Okay. Now, it's 1.43. I want to reinforce that, you know when you got an answer like this, especially lately, a lot of times the answers we get don't actually work. Then they're called extraneous answers. So let's double check this to make sure it actually worked. Would you please type in 5 to the 1.43 power and see if it really equals 10. Try it. Use the calculator. 5 to the 1.43. And if it's 9.98, isn't that pretty much 10? And why would it be off? Think about it. Exactly, because I didn't use the full answer. I rounded it, so of course this answer is going to not come out to exactly 10. It's going to be close. That makes sense, right? Okay, 
I need you to focus on the math right now, and it seems like you're too obsessed with the calculator issues. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to keep moving here. Um, this one, log 2, no, log base 5 of x equals 2. Write that one. Get a new page in your notes. Rapido. Get a blank page. You don't just, if it's not on any of your pages, you want a blank page. All right. Do you get that this is not something that you would be able to just like know in your head? Mm -hmm. So as soon as I write it in the other way, exponential form, the other one was an exponent, we turned it into a log. This one's a log, we need to turn it into an exponent. If we write it as an exponent, it'll be easy. Do you know how to start? Five to the two equals, no, equals just x. The point is to get the log out of there. So there it is. You just go this to the this equals that. Five to the two equals x. So what is x? 25. See how now I can do it? That is half of the challenge with logs is to just learn how to rewrite logs as exponents or exponents as logs. Once you got that, you got half of the whole subject. And that, that's same in pre-calc. Like half of the questions we give in, in pre-calc in logs, all I need you do, to do is to rewrite it from the log form into the exponential form or back and forth. So I'm going to give you a few, and I'll practice that a little bit here. Rewrite this as an exponential right now on your iPad. You don't have to write the problem I write. You just change it and write that. So this would be 5 to the x equals 12. Good. Now, I ask you, which of these two gets you the answer better, the first way I had it or the second way? The first way. Because this, you don't have a way of doing that in the calculator easily. You'd have to guess and check. This, you could do in the calculator, zip, zip. It would be what? Log 12 over log 5. You want to play? All right, let's try another one. x to the third equals 8. Rewrite that as a log. It starts with a log, right? What's the base? And then what number comes next? The 3 or the 8? The 8. It's never as simple as just going in order. It goes from here over to here, back over to here. Remember that. That circular pattern. Okay. Equals 3. And now I ask you, which is better? Option A or option B? A. Because you can do that in your head, can't you? What's the answer to x? Two. two. See? Can't do this one in your head. So this one is actually better. So it really depends. But you've got to be able to go back and forth. If you have it in log form and you're not getting the answer, rewrite it as an exponential. If you have it as an exponential and you're not getting the answer, rewrite it as a log. OK, let's try another one. Log base x of 3 equals 1. Once you get good at these, you start saying, oh, my answer is this. What's the answer? Yeah. Because x to the 1 equals 3. And x to the 1 is just x, right? So x equals 3. Done. Now, let me just put in this x equals 3 thing, and notice what happens. If I have a 3 right there for x, do you get that now all of a sudden? It's log base 3 of 3 equals 1. Do you remember that property? While I was gone, I hope you learned that if these two numbers are the same, then the answer 
is whatever the exponent is on this one. Does that ring a bell? I'm going to show you another one like that. Let's say I had, the exponent on this would be a 1, right? So the answer is 1. Let's say it was log base 8 of 8 to the third. What's the answer? 3. Now I could prove that the long way, because see there's no x in this right now, so I can say equals x. And I could say 8 to the x equals 8 to the third. Now all of a sudden, well duh, x has to be 3. Because x to 8 to the x equals 8 to the third. These bases are equal, so they can cancel. You remember that? So x equals 3. And if you just notice the property, if these are the same, that's the answer. Okay, here's a tougher one. Log base 2 of 16. What's the answer? Come on. 4. 4. You're sharp today. Must have been all that underwater experience. So the 16 could be written as, I don't know why I'm getting that feedback. 16 could be written as 2 to the fourth. You see how that works and now all of a sudden the twos are the same and then the answer is 4. Get what I mean? Because this was a 16 right there and I just replaced it with a 2 to the fourth. Then if these two are the same, that's the answer. The answer is 4. Otherwise, if I wanted to prove it, I'd say equals x. 2 to the x equals 2 to the 4th, and then x must be 4. All right. Man, it's really loud. Let's see if I can change the microphone down a smidge. There. Okay. That should help the feedbacking problem. All right. Another thing you've got to be remembering is this. If I said 8 to the 2 thirds power, do you remember what that means? Yes, 8 to the 1 third squared. Do you remember how you break it up in two parts? There's the bottom part here, which is the 1 third part, and then there's the top, which is the squared part. And the good part about this is it still multiplies together and makes 2 thirds, but now it's broken into bite-sized chunks because I bet you you all know what 8 to the 1 third power is. 2. And then 2 to the second would be? So my answer is 4. So 8 to the 2 thirds power is 4. I'm going to give you another one like that. Please write this one down on your iPad 27 to the uh, no, let's go with 2 thirds again. 27 to the 2 thirds power. And then figure out what to break it into. And then figure out what the answer is. This is perfect. Here, let me turn it this way. Did you take a picture of that? Here, I'll take the picture. Oopie, I just missed it. Dang it. <laughs> I forgot to press the bottom. It was goofing me up because it's the bottom and top. Email it to me. Really fast. Okay, so fractional exponents are huge. Rewriting things from log form to exponential or exponential form to, lo to, to log form is like the the main part of what we do. So what are we doing that's new today? Well basically uh, we're just going to do some problems where you have x somewhere in the log and then most of the time you rewrite it doing the making log form into exponential form and then you just solve the equation. So it's really pretty easy if you understand what logs are. All right did you email it to me? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Let's see, quick. There it is. Excellent. And, okay. So now, I've got, you broke the two-thirds into that to the one-third, and then to the second power. Perfect. And then 27 to the one-third is what? Three. And now you have the three being squared, and the answer is? Nine. Raise your hand if you had nine. 
All right. And the reason I chose yours is that you showed the work exactly the way I would want people to. So. All right. Yes? What? The two-thirds. Okay. Can you, in other words, can you do some of this in your head? Yes. Can you do all of it in your head all the time? No. And you won't be able to all the time. So I don't mind some shortcuts, but some work is always in required. Some in your head is also okay. All right. So let me get this out of here. Close the ink layer. Shrink that down. Shrink that down. All right. So now I'm going to uh, get into the meat of what we're doing today. Just look at this page. Find this one in the notes. Number one. You should be able to just say what the answer is. Done. What is it? Five, five six. Because these two are the same. That one's the answer. Five, six. Okay, next one. That one doesn't come to me automatically, but if I could rewrite that two-thirds as a four-ninths, do you get how that would be good? Because then the base and the argument would be the same. But two-thirds isn't the same as four-ninths. But two-thirds is the same as four-ninths to the something power. And once I figure out that power, then I'll have the answer. Two-thirds to the one-half power is, sorry, four-ninths to the one-half power is two-thirds. So now, this and this are the same, and therefore that's my answer. The answer is one-half. Back to number three. Log base two of all that junk. It's a little tough on a Monday morning to expect you to be able to do this one, but some of you probably could. Do you get that this is log base 2 of 32 to the something power? One third power, very good. And that is not good enough to get me an answer, though, because these are not the same as each other. But could I write the 32 as 2 to the something? Yes. What would it be? It's not to the fourth. It's 2 to the fifth. The 32 is 2 to the fifth. Nope. I, oh, yeah, you're right. I have this written wrong. This should be a third power there. Sorry. Right there. Okay. Now, how come the answer ends up being five-thirds? These together make five times one-third to be five-thirds. All right, moving on. Um, this is kind of uh, like warm-up stuff that we've already practiced enough. I think we can skip over it. I want you to get to this screen right here. I know you're excited to be back, but we need to focus, please. Distracting your friends. All right, do you see that there's an X down here in the base on this one? And this one is called the argument. And when the x is over here, that's called the exponent. Why? Because if I rewrote this thing, it would be 2 to the x equals 8. You get that? So the x is an exponent. So really, a log, any log problem where you've got both of these numbers is giving you an exponent. That is the exponent. All right, so terminology-wise, if I had you look at this and I said, would you please name for me the base in this problem? Uh, the base would be what? What's the five called? The argument. What's the x called? The exponent. All right, good. Now, we've got enough base knowledge now so that I can have you practice it in a little bit of a different way. I'm going to have you do something on flashcard let. This isn't going to show up on a recording, so I'm going to pause for a minute while we do that. Okay, a couple other little quick notes about logs that I want to remind you about. You're supposed to know that logs are not allowed to have bases that are negative. So, like, you can't have log base negative 3. You can't even have a 0 there. You can't even have a 0 here. They always have to be positive numbers. 
So like, that'd be fine. Even that would be fine. But you can't have a negative in the base or in the argument. One last requirement, you can't have a one as the base. Here's why. You might end up with something like this. And then you'd say 1 to the power of x equals 5. And that's impossible. So therefore, this cannot be a 1 down there. So as soon as you get an answer on the test, or a question on the test that says this, there's one like this in pre-calc. I'll tell you ahead of time. Yeah, not there yet. But one of the major test questions says something like this. And kids go through and do all this work to try to figure out what the answer is. And what is the answer? Impossible. Why is that impossible? Not allowed to have a negative right there in the argument. Another one that's impossible? As soon as there's a one down on the base, pfft, impossible. Not allowed. Okay. All right. Have you got your flashcards narrowed down to just three or four that you don't understand? All right, so I just wanted to get that practice. There are a few things that the ones you starred that you didn't know how to do, I will eventually teach you how to do those things, but you don't need to know them yet. All right, this is a typical problem that we are doing today for to new stuff. I want to get you caught up because now that you're caught up, today's really an easy day. All right, well, we're learning it's how to solve problems where there's an X down here in the base. What did I tell you would solve almost every problem that we have? Changing it over to the other form, yeah. I'm going to call it rewrite. This is a log. Rewrite it as an exponent. x to the third equals 8. It's right there. Do you get that, that you can solve that in your head? See, now it's just, I granted you could put it to the one third power like it shows right here, but you can just use your head and say, okay, 2 to the third is 8, so the answer must be 2. But anytime you want to get rid of a f power, you just use the inverse power on both sides. All right. So now let's look at another one. This one's a little more tricky. Find this slide. It's in your notes. Go back to your notes. X minus 4. To the power of what? 3 over 2. I'm going to put this in parentheses. Equals 64. Do you get what I just did? I just did a, re a rewrite. I took it from log form into exponential form. And now here's the thing. If I can get rid of this, it'll be a super simple problem. I'll just have to add 4 to both sides and I'll be done. So how do I get rid of this? You put it to the two-thirds two power. If I put both sides to the two-thirds power, then this cancels this, and I have x minus 4 equals, and that is something you could do in your head. Because you can put 64 to the one-third power to the second, remember that, and then what is 64 to the one-third? Maybe you haven't got that memorized. It's 4. Yeah. It's 4 times 4 times 4 makes 64. Okay, so it's 4. If this part's 4, then I square it. So x minus 4 equals 16. And then what do I do? Add 4 to both sides. x equals 12. If my life depended on this answer, would I? Okay. <laughs> Add 4 to both sides. See, if my life depended on it, I'm dead. But, but. I was going to do something that would have told me that it was wrong. What do you think I was going to do? I was going to check it. I was going to go back and put this 20 in and make sure it really worked. If I put a 20 right in here, 20 minus 4 is 16. That's log base 16 of 64. Log base 16 of 64. And I can do that in my head if I can rewrite that 64 as 16 to the something power. Now, that's kind of complicated, but this one was tough to check. But it's, rewrite that as 16 to the something. Well, I have to, uh, it's going to be a fraction power because the answer ends up being 3 over 2. 
Okay, so bottom line is this was a tough one to check, but you can check them by sticking them back in. And every now and then we're going to give you ones that are extraneous. Like let's say you had this problem. Don't even solve it. Let's say we came out with the answer was negative 2. And you go back and you check it. Can you tell me what's going to happen? You'll have a negative in the base. And therefore, it's called something that starts with an E. Extraneous. Extraneous. See, it's negative 6 plus 1, which would be negative 5. This ends up being log base negative 5, and that's not allowed. So it's going to happen to you that you will get an answer on the test. And you'll think that that's the right answer because you've done all this work, and then you get this answer, and then it doesn't work. You've got to double check your answers. Stay focused on this, please. So you can, you can put that back in and realize, oh, that's not going to work. All right. So this is my last little set of practice. You're going to do these three practice problems. And then I'm going to tell you which problems in your homework we're going to skip. Because we're going to skip some because it's a kind of a longish assignment. And I don't want to do that to you on the first day back. So do these with me first and then we'll go through your homework and skip some. Try these three. All right, here we go. You should have said x to the third equals 64. And then, how do you fix that? You put it to the what power? x to the third equals 64. See how I did that? Now I'm going to go to the what power? To the one third. And if you don't have this one memorized, you might want to start memorizing it because it keeps coming up. What's 64 to the one third? Four. four. This answer's four. How many of you had that before I had that? Okay, good. On to the next one. X to the 1 half equals 5 over 2. How do you get rid of the 1 half power? You square it. Okay, and then it's 5 halves to the squared. 5 halves squared is 25 over 4. I bet you that's the answer. Yes, it is. 25 over 4. And the last one. This one's look kind of complicated, but let's fight through it and see if we can get it. 4x plus 4 to the, notice I'm going to put this whole thing to the power of 5 fourths, because otherwise I'd just be doing it to the 4, and that wouldn't be right. Equals 32. How do I get rid of a 5 fourths power? Times it by 4 fifths, you are right. And I'll have 4x plus 4 is equal to, somebody the calculator, what is, oh, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to use a calculator. What the heck? Oh, I know. If I put it to the 4 fifths power, I can do that in my head because the 1 fifth power of 32 is 2, and then I go 2 to the 4th power, 16. 16. Yes. And then I add, no, subtract 4 from both sides would be 4x equals 12, x equals 3. Now, what if my life depended on it? I go back and check it. Put it in a three year. Put it in a three is 12, plus four is 16. Log base 16 of 32. That one is complicated again to try to check, but if my life depended on it, I'd be checking it. All right. I don't want to do another one. I think you got enough practice in your uh, homework for tonight. So let's open it to your homework, and I want to show you which ones you can skip. Because again, my deal is, you know I expect you to have this homework done tomorrow. So to be that like pushy about that, I also have to make my homework reasonable. So it's too long the way it is. So once you find your homework, get it open quick so we can tell you which ones to cross off. You gotta stay with me. All right. Whoa, that was loud. Scary. Okay. Uh, number one, you may skip D, E, and F. Yes, find problem one. Skip D, E, and F. Then go to problem two. You can also skip D, E, and F on number two. Go to the next page. You may skip, you got it, J, D, E, and F. And then J, K, and 
L. And then on the last page, we're going to go only skip A, B, and C on that one. Because that page, you can use a calculator. Oh, it's not that bad. You're in the accelerated class for a reason. You realize I just cut this down quite a bit, so there should be no whining. Okay, get to work. Save.